lawsuits will be uh, become uh, securities probably in the next five years. That's interesting because a lot of people are freaking out about the whole Arizona private equity buying into firms. But that also, it's a double-edged sword because the same way that private equity can kind of get into firms, you also can open it up to the general public in terms of lawsuits becoming securities. And now the general public can invest in law firms and have equity in the cases that they work up versus you using outside capital. Because the real problem is the funding companies. They're making so much money <laughs> off of like people's misfortunes. And it started with the cash advance companies that have been around for 20, 30 years, and they'll charge 100% interest. And then there's the litigation finance companies that um, start getting really, really high interest rates. Some of them are already, you know, in bed with a DC firm where they'll have like, you know, a percentage of equity in your cases. And a lot of times it's a, it's a sharky deal. You know, you're getting these ridiculously high interest rates, but if you, if you position it more as a security where it's an investment for the general public and the public can now invest in protecting consumers by investing their dollars the same way they buy a stock of Apple, they could buy shares in this mass tort against this massive multi-billion dollar conglomerate. I feel like that actually evens the playing field. Yeah, I would say that there's a huge difference on litigation funders versus, uh, you know, the J.G. Wentworth, you know, the plaintiff funders. I mean, th those guys are definitely um, predatorial on the consumers, right? And, and they're the ones that know the least. Now, guys that are litigation finance guys, they're backing law firms and sure may it have a negative offense, uh, effect on like the litigation or the landscape or what the lawyer does maybe. Um, but I don't think it hurts the consumers. If anything, I think the money now comes with regulation and, and oversight because that's what they're used to in the finance world. And so what's happening now isn't that Wall Street's fucking with everybody and messing up the marketplace. It's just highlighting problems that we clearly have. Yeah. Like, you know, like you guys, lost all my money. Well, they were a terrible operating business. Like, like that, that's a problem for clients, right? So like, as more and more money comes in the market, they're going to hold all business to a new standard, which is going to benefit the consumer in the end. But this is just the process of getting there. You're going to see a lot more shit come out before it fixes things. What do you think about the companies that their entire business model is taking investments from other lawyers, um, PI lawyers, to invest in various mass tort campaigns. And they basically scalp a 10, 15% management fee off the top end, off the front end, and then take you know a percentage of the attorney's fee on the back end. That's our entire business model. Do you think that industry has a likelihood of consolidating or is it gonna become fragmented like PI where there's just gonna be a bunch of people all competing to get investors? Cause if I get a pool of five different lawyers and say, hey, you guys each give me a hundred grand I'll start investing. I got 2 million followers on social media. I make a couple of posts. We get together, we partner up with these other firms. I mean, where do you think it's going to end up? I think that gets consolidated and goes away. Um, there's already a trend right now. I mean, it, you know, there's, I think it was like five, five billion invested in the market in litigation finance last year. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. And it's growing at like a 20, 30% clip. And it's pretty, it's, it's huge. Um, but when you talk to the, the guys behind the guys, behind the guys, once you peel the onion back, uh, and there's not many of them, maybe four or five guys that really control the whole thing. And you realize that this whole exercise of deploying these 5 billion a year, 3 billion a year before was just learning. Like that's how fucking big Wall Street is. And so what they're realizing is like those guys add no value to the process. So now they're like, well, should we either build it ourselves like a QA shop, like a QA process or like the marketing and aggregation side? Should we, they're just, they're just testing the waters on how to like turn this fragmented uh, you know, dated market into a more enterprise type, you know, environment. And so those guys, as soon as you realize like, why, how do they create value once you have a single place where you can just put all your money in, you can guarantee the requirements and the case criteria and the price points and all that and pay no fee. Like it's, you know, it's the easiest thing to commoditize is marketing and advertising. Like it's, it's a business that's been around forever. Do you think the predictability of mass torts could ever get to a point where you give me an investment, I can give you a four to 6% return on your money, almost like, you know, a bank account, savings account. And then that's basically your ROI. And then once we've three X or four X, then you can get, you know, any sort of extra dividend. And do you think that's a possibility? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's a no brainer. I think the the reason why Lit Fin is overpriced right now is because it's an emerging market. I mean, like the same guys that were doing Uber and WeWork, like like Benchmark Capital and Fortress, like the same guys doing Lit Fin. Like it's the same to them. It's just how do we get alpha, you know, on emerging markets? And if they're willing to give the twenty percent loans, it means the asset is underpriced and there's lack of capital. So as we get standardization, you end up, get, and they also feel very comfortable in getting paid back. So, yeah, the idea of having a, a, a you know, a derivative type environment where you can actually do investments or ETFs or mutual funds and get higher than bond returns, yeah, and you know, and it's asynchronous to the market, so it's a good diversification for investors, consumers. So, yeah, I think after standards, I mean, you'll you'll have like ETF products that are institutional. Who do you think is, are there any current players that are best positioned to create an ETF style product? That will be the Goldman's. They're not, so to, with the irony here is like the guys that you hear of that are doing this stuff, they're nobody's compared to the Goldman Sachs and the trillion dollar huge players. So once it becomes a security, it then gets out of the emerging market space, which is the funds you hear about into like big boy, you know, commodities and stocks. And, and then at that point, it's safe to say you probably can't compete. I mean, you can go invest on NASDAQ or whatever. Yeah. 